Now, we're talking about the moon. Uh, let's move on to the questions we've got from uh, the kids. Um, starting off with a question from Autumn. How do you move around in space when you're floating? Autumn, that is an amazing question. It's important because it's very different than how you move around on Earth. If you tried to walk in space, your foot would just shoot you up to the top of the module. You would just go bouncing. So you can't use your feet to move. You have to use your hands and you have to hold on. So it's like you're crawling around, growing from handrail to handrail. And when you get to where you want to go, you slide your feet underneath those handrails. So there's all these um, handrails. Uh, they're, they're like just little thin metal bars that you can stick your feet underneath and hold yourself in place. Um, we have a few like foot official foot stands that you can slide your foot into. But for the most part, we just use the handrails and slide your feet under. So you wear socks every day in space. You don't wear shoes because you're not walking and you don't need them. Um, and so you just wear socks around every day. If you're running on the treadmill, you have to wear shoes. But other than that, you just move around with your hands. And if you need to go, if you're going to do a, if you're not just going to crawl, if you're going to push and float somewhere, that takes time to learn. Cause if you push and you're not good at what you're doing, you'll, you're going to spin yourself around too. So you'll end up spinning while you float through the space station and you might not get to where you're going hands first, you might get there back first. <laughs> Oh, wow. Okay. So it's a, it's a skill that you still have to learn over time there. Right. Okay. Um, thank you, Suzanne, for joining in from Germany. Um, Daryl is saying, hi, Terry. Um, I sent you something to your mom and dad's house. Hope you got it in time. Um, <laughs> and that they, they miss you. Thanks for joining in, Daryl. Hope, you, hope you're enjoying the show. Um, well, let's move on to our next question from Jaden. I was wondering how long can your air tank last? to breathe on the moon? That is a really important question because if you open up the window, there's no atmosphere out there and you'll die. So the only air you have on the moon is what you bring with you. Um, and what's and the same is true in on the space station too. It's not just on the moon. So on the ISS, we have enough oxygen stored up for a few months. Um, you know, we can, we can literally go for months um, and for food, for oxygen, for supplies, um, sometimes more than a year. And there's a group of folks in Houston that track that. Their job is to keep track of all the supplies that we have and make sure we have enough. When I was in space, that was really important because we lost three cargo ships that blew up. Uh, Orbital Cygnus blew up, a Russian Progress blew up, and a SpaceX Dragon blew up back to back to back over an eight month period. So the space station was getting low on supplies. Thankfully, they had planned and they had, you know, all of this backup equipment that we had margin, we had supplies, it was probably over a year worth of, of oxygen. Um, when we go to the moon, we're not going to have that much uh, oxygen supply. Yeah. Uh, the Apollo guys only had a couple days worth, you know, there was not a lot of extra, extra oxygen to breathe in. Um, on the space shuttle, if you stretched it out really long, you could go about a month, um, but you never wanted to do that because you'd run out of other things. But um, the supply, the limiting factor would either be oxygen on the shuttle or carbon dioxide removal. Because when we breathe out carbon dioxide, um, we use these things called lithium hydroxide cans that pulled the carbon dioxide out of the atmosphere. So we had about roughly about a month on the space shuttle. So a few days on Apollo moon ships, a month or so on a space shuttle and on the space station, probably a year. Interesting. What What about what about when you're out on a spacewalk? So when you did three spacewalks, go to right. <clears throat> right. So then, the consumables again, we call it consumables. Limit is usually about nine hours, maybe eight hours, nine hours, something like that. And it can either be oxygen or carbon dioxide, because again, those those um we have a special device that takes carbon dioxide out of the atmosphere and it depends on the person sometimes it's oxygen sometimes it's co2 that's the limiting factor but that's based on uh your body like 
some people's bodies breathe more oxygen, some people's bodies breathe out more carbon dioxide. So every astronaut's a little bit different. But what's interesting about the atmosphere too in space, as you know, on Earth, our atmosphere is about 80% nitrogen and only 20% oxygen. But humans don't um, consume nitrogen. Nitrogen just comes in and it goes out, comes in our bodies mm -hmm. and goes out. But we actually consume the oxygen. So our lungs are smart enough to have these uh, parts of the lung that suck in the oxygen, put it in our blood, our, it goes through our body, it turns it into energy um, and muscle, and then sometimes fat. <laughs> and then you breathe out carbon dioxide. So your body is like this oxygen plus food equals CO2 machine, um, but we don't ever consume the nitrogen. So on the space station, uh, the nitrogen kind of stays there forever. And it's only the oxygen that we have to reply or re uh, replenish. Very rarely do we ever have to put, you know, bring up nitrogen to the ISS. Okay, that's interesting. And a follow on question to Autumn coming in from the Ringler family. Um, and they're asking, were there any funny moments that you can share um, when they were trying to get from one part of the station to the other? That I can share. <laughs> so actually, we had this competition where you would start on the end of the station, like in node two, which is the very front, and you'd kick off and you'd try and see how many modules you could float through without banging onto the wall. Um, and that's not easy. And like, there really is, you know, there's different levels of skill between astronauts, how good they are at floating around. Just like on Earth, some people are good athletes and some people are not. In space, some people can float really well and some people are not so good. So that was a really cool thing. Or you'd start back in the Russian segment and push forward um, and try and make it all the way to node two. And in the front of node two, we had, a, we call it a bungee jail. It's all these bungee cords to, if you got a bag, you just throw it back there and it stays in place. So when you get to the bungee jail, you, you and then bounce off of it, but it was like a soft landing. It wasn't like just banging into the wall. Well, that sounds extremely fun. <laughs> it was really fun. Okay, uh, well, let's move on to our next question from the kids. Uh, we've got a question from Max. Hello, my question is, what is the moon like? Well, that's a cool question, Max. I have the same question because I have never been to the moon. We haven't sent people to the moon in almost 50 years. The last Apollo mission, Apollo 17, left the moon in 1972 and nobody's been back. So hopefully we'll send people there soon. Um, the moon is very uh, gray and brown. When you see it in the sky, it looks gray, but actually when you're there, you can you see a lot more brown. Um, but it's very rocky. There's no water or anything like that. There's no trees. There's no nothing, just rocks. Um, some of them are crushed up rocks from where meteorites hit the moon billions of years ago and made all this crunchy, you know, dust. And some of it is from volcanoes. The moon used to have volcanoes and there's, they call them mare, which means seas. But if you look at in binoculars or in a telescope, you'll see these big, dark, smooth circles. And those are from volcanoes that erupted and put lava out. Um, so the moon is super hot when the sun is up and super cold when the sun is down. It's like plus or minus 250 degrees or more. It's, it gets really hot in the daytime and really cold at night. Um, and you have a two week day and a two week night. That's why we have months on earth because it takes the moon about 29 days to go around the earth. And while it's doing that, you know, half the time you're in darkness and half the time you're in light. So if you were living on the moon, you'd have a two week long daytime and a two week long nighttime. And um, the gravity is a lot less. The gravity is only one sixth of what it is on Earth. So when you see the Apollo astronauts bouncing around, that's they have gravity, but just not very much. So um, those are some of the cool things about what the moon is like. Oh, what, what a great question, Max. Um, thanks for that. Um, next, next up is Elijah. Hi, my name is Elijah. And how does an astronaut sleep? <laughs> Elijah, that's an important, I had the same question before I flew because um, I was worried, you know, can I sleep? Here's a picture of me in my sleeping bag. So 
uh, we have a small little area. It's like a phone booth. If you don't know what that is, ask your parents because they don't have many of those anymore. And um, the you close the door and it's your own space. So that's where you sleep. Turn the lights off. Um, I would get in the sleeping bag, zip it up, put my head in like that, and just be completely inside the sleeping bag. When I took this picture, I stuck my head out just so you could see, you know, a person there and um, float. In the picture, I have a bungee cord around my waist holding me in place so you could see me. But when I was actually sleeping, I would just float and it was really cool. So um, sleeping in space is a lot of fun. Uh, sometimes I would put headphones on and plug it into my laptop and listen to music, which was really cool. It was in, it's interesting to say it was really fun because a couple of weeks ago we were speaking to um, Michael Lopez Allegri on Space to Alive, and he said mm -hmm. he, he didn't really enjoy it as much because he he kept waking up um, and it was difficult. Yes, I think some astronauts have that experience, and for me, I never had any problem. I went to bed. I, we had before there were Fitbits. We had a, a special. Um, they call it an act watch. It was like a watch that would measure your activity. And, um, uh, you know, something like, like a, like a normal, my Omega watch here. Um, so that would measure how you slept. And when I was in space, it was complete flat line. I was just out mm -hmm. on earth. It would kind of bounce around and toss and turn and stuff. But personally I sleep better in space than I do on earth. 